going to be a presentation with some uh, Q&A opportunity, and I'm uh, going to attempt to leave enough time to do that Q&A uh, as well as we can, given that we've got 100 participants uh, logged in. So as I said before, feel free to submit your questions through the, um, the questions tab on the panel to the right. And again, we're going to invite you to send your contributions to this project after the webinar, but before March 4th. Um, we have a timeline to wrap this entire project up. We've been on the go for the last number of months, um, and we need to have a final report submitted before the end of March. So we'd like any contributions from industry to be submitted before March 4th. A little bit about us. Um, this project has been spearheaded by BioNB and Bioindustrial Innovation Canada to develop a national bioeconomy strategy. We've got a lot of partners around the table, including BioAlberta, Biotech Canada, Cribic, uh, FPAC, FP Innovations, Manitoba Agriculture, Nova Scotia Innovation Hub, Ontario Agri-Food Technologies, and Ontario Federation of Agriculture. The funding to allow us to do this and, and crisscross the country to do the consultation sessions was um, provided by Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada. If you've got any particular questions, I'll leave the slide up for a second. Um, feel free to contact Jen O'Donnell. She is my colleague here at BioNB. Um, her email address and her phone number is there. We're open to taking um, questions, comments, uh, you name it. Any time um, before the end of March. Um, and again, I'll, I'll give you the opportunity to engage through a WebMonkey survey a little later on. So today's presenters uh, are myself, Megan Seagrave. I'm the Executive Director for BioNB. I apologize for my slightly hoarsing voice. Um, I think it's just a little too much uh, time crisscrossing the country and talking with folks. We've also got Marie McLaughlin here, who's the president of McLaughlin Consulting. Um, Dr. McLaughlin um, also consults um, nationally and internationally on bioeconomy files, primarily from an agriculture and forestry perspective. Um, he's an advisor to Bioindustrial Innovation Canada on international and government relations. He was also the founding executive director of BIC and the Sustainable Chemistry Alliance, both located at Asarnia. And he's managed the AgSci cluster, um, which is a national bioproducts cluster supported by Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada. And Marie, for those of you who know him, um, Marie has held various positions, both in the private sector, government, and not-for-profit sectors for the last few decades. Um, Marie's got a long history in establishing uh, the bioeconomy sector in Canada and internationally. So Marie's actually going to do um, the front end of the presentation, and I'm going to do the back end. All right, so I'm going to hand it over to Marie, and uh, he's going to do the next... Uh, couple of slides, uh, and then I'll take it back. Thanks, Megan. Uh, hopefully everybody can hear me from uh, out in uh, Edmonton today from uh, busy with uh, some other activities. There, but, uh, looking forward to this webinar and looking forward to the feedback from all of you are participating. Uh, I just thought I'd take a couple minutes here to talk about what is the biotechnology from the point of how we're defining that Within, our, within the scope of our expectations. Uh, it is generally recognized that the key of the attributes of a healthy bioeconomy is a knowledge-based, competitive, and innovative and sustainable use of biological resources, processes, and principles to provide eco-friendly goods and services. And that's the, the definition that we've been using during our, our uh, consultations across the country. The next slide, uh, Megan will... Um, so trying to cover a little bit about the breadth of the bioeconomy and how we look at it again in this conversation. Bioeconomy covers all sector systems that we have biological resources. That's animals, plants, microorganisms, and derived Mass, including organic waste, their functions and their principles, including links, land and marine ecosystems and the services they provide, all primary production sectors that use and produce physical resources, agriculture, 
forest, fisheries, and agriculture, and economic industrial sector that use biological resources and processes to produce food, feed, waste product, energy, and services. So as you can see, it's a very broad ranging. And we, in this uh, consultation, have focused primarily on the agricultural sector uh, with some emphasis on forestry as well. And we'll touch a little bit more, more on that uh, later on and how we uh, how we would bring these these together. Um, looking at it from uh, from Canada's bioeconomy, uh, Canada, you know, has an exciting history of innovation in the bioeconomy sector. Uh, members of the bioeconomy trying to break into new markets, chemicals, improve foods, compost, and, and other areas. As a matter of fact, I'm at a conference here in Edmonton today around lignin and nanocrystal cellulose, and uh, it's interesting to see the discussions at this conference and the focus on, on market opportunities in those sectors. The industrial bioeconomy is a key part of Canada's Future and uh, if you're the size don't buy uh, the sidewalk out of the window here, we had a little bit of snow this morning. Um, economy biodesign consortium that we that we started. Um, its mission is to build and support highly Canadian firms who commercialize new bio-based products, develop new mass to bioprotologies. Um, this design consortium started when we were looking at this application um, about a year and a half, two years ago now. And interestingly, we hit the super, but we gained about 35 industry members that we wanted to look at how we can bring the biodiesel consortium together, hence the initial of setting up the economy. Our economy have many benefits for the including growth, environmental benefit and new technology innovation. So we're really looking forward to uh, consultations. We've had some great presentations across the country and look for feedback as well of today uh, the, and the, including the survey that we'll uh, be talking about later. So Canada needs bioeconomy strategy. Why? Uh, the products that comprise the bioeconomy will have a positive impact on economic growth of Canada while mitigating climate change. It is important to use Canada's natural capital efficiently. Uh, we have laws across the country in agriculture and in forestry. Uh, so let's make sure we use it properly. And then the cross-cutting technologies development, development will lead to new products and materials that will change the nature of global supply chains. And the global supply chains are really important thing to start understanding and how we how we become part of those global, global chains. And we must live, grow, and manufacture more efficiently and effectively to be, be part of this future growth in the bioeconomy. Oh, let's see. Is this... <clears throat> Why? And then. Uh, we propose uh, we, we proposed uh, this project to AAFC based on gaps we see for the industrial agricultural sector and the opportunity to craft an industry industry led message and re recommended actions for the bioeconomy. Ag Canada has been very gracious in providing the funding for this this project. That uh, took them a little long of life, but we did get the funding, and then we've been very active in pulling together this strategy that will, as Megan mentioned, be done by the end. Uh, in the March, so we're uh, looking forward to your folks' feedback. I hand that back to Megan. So Megan is first. Thanks, Murray. So um, we undertook uh, a pretty extensive consultation process. Um, and our plan, or I guess what we're hoping to achieve, um, is to validate a framework um, and identify any gaps develop some action-oriented recommendations and record examples of successes and challenges in Canada's bioeconomy. Um, as Marie mentioned, um, we have been doing consultations across 
the country for the last number of months. We've done nine events from coast to coast. We've had about 250 attendees thus far. We've got another, um, the numbers are actually still coming in, but um, we've got another 100 folks online today, um, most of whom are industry. There are some associations and there have been some academic participation there too. Uh, you can see where we did the consultation sessions and when we did them. We started with one in Sarnia, but most of them were actually done in January and February. And I think the team can actually attest to that, given all of the snowbound airports that we got stuck in um, over the last two months. So uh, where did we start from? Uh, interestingly enough, um, there was a foundation for a national bioeconomy already well planted. Um, for those of you who are coming from the forestry sector, the Canadian Council of Forest Ministers launched a bioeconomy framework for Canada in September of 2017. If you're not familiar with that document, it's available online and you can just Google it. Um, but it was a good starting point, um, focused very much on the forestry sector but laid the foundation for um, what a good bioeconomy strategy could be. There were a number of other notable reports that have been released um, fairly recently, including the Canada as an Agri-Food Powerhouse, um, Innovation in Agriculture, um, you might know it as the Barton Report, and then the Economic Strategy um, Sector Tables. So these are the ones that were coordinated by ICED, had a, a lot of industry folks around the table and they did them across the country. Uh, there were seven total and we focused on the agri-food table, the clean technology table and the resources of the future table. So if when we get into the key priority areas and the recommendations, and keep in mind that we had a starting point, um, both from the forced uh, minister's uh, bioeconomy framework and from these um, reports. So we weren't starting from scratch. Uh, I, I will say that, um, you know, where we're hoping to get is taking uh, all of those independent frameworks, the consortium of partners who are focused on the bioeconomy, um, the, the foundational reports to merge them into a national bioeconomy strategy for Canada. That's the goal. So what, um, what did our review reveal? I did mention that we had foundational reports and we also had um, the forest minister's uh, bioeconomy framework. We, we took all of those reports, we pulled them apart, we grabbed key priority areas. We actually started with about 16 key priority areas that were, some were common, some were what we, were, what we thought was filling gaps. We then narrowed them down even more. Um, and we think that we were able to focus them around these four key priority areas, being agile regulation and government policy, establishing biomass supply and stewardship, building strong companies and value chains, and building strong sustainable ecosystems. These might not seem like, um, you know, we're, we're coming up with anything that's really new, um, but these are foundational priority areas in order to build a really good strategy. So I'm going to spend the next couple of minutes, I'm just going to take a look at the time, and we're good for time. I'm going to take the next couple of minutes and go through these four key priority areas and give you an idea of the recommendations um, in terms of what we heard through all of these consultation sessions. Uh, you'll see them on the screen, and we'll give you the opportunity to ask questions. Um, if you would like, you can pose questions after after I go through each of these. If not, um, we can keep it to the end and that's fine as well. Um, and we'll be sending out a survey or making a survey available uh, at the end of this presentation, which will reiterate a lot of these recommendations. And we're gonna ask you to um, validate. We're, ask, we're gonna ask if they resonate with you um, and if they are true priorities. Um, I will say that over the, the last two months in those nine sessions that we've done to date, um, we started off with a list that was about, I'm going to say it was well more than 50 recommendations long. Um, and as we validated those across those nine uh, industry consultation sessions, we narrowed it down, narrowed it down, and narrowed it down to what kept coming across um, in terms of what we heard as the priorities that needed to be focused on. And our plan moving forward is to put some action items to those so that there's an actual action and implementation plan. 
So the first one, um, Agile Regulations and Government Policy. Um, this, this has come up um, with all of the foundational documentation that we have reviewed. Um, I'll also mention that as part of that sort of lit review, there was another 60 reports that we um, took into account, reviewed, um, pulled apart. Most of them were national and international bioeconomy strategies from a global perspective, and some of them were even provincial um, ones here in Canada and then a few um, from the US. Uh, so agile regulation government policy was across the board um, one of the big priority areas. What we heard was um, establishing an industry advisory group um, that was focused around the bioeconomy. So making sure that industry was the one that was advising government um, from a regulatory and a policy perspective. Uh, ensuring standards and reference methods and data requirements were smarter. Um, making processes and procedures more efficient, both within government um, on the policy side and on the regulatory side. Considering innovation, growth and competitiveness as part of uh, a regulator's mandate. Um, you could probably even put in there economic development as part of a regulator's mandate. Uh, one of the things that was very common across a lot of the bioeconomy strategies that we reviewed internationally was the regulatory arms within those governments at a state level and at a, a national level all had economics um, or economic development as part of their mandate. It was about the competitiveness and growth of firms within the industry. Um, at the moment, that is not uh, a factor within the regulation or the regulatory bodies within our government. Um, adopting a multi-sector approach to recognizing that products um, are going to fall between the cracks. They're complex um, from a regulatory environment perspective. And, and that's where the, the agile um, regulation needs to come into play. We need to also promote bio-based technologies and products in a domestic and global, global value chain. Um, so we need to really focus on what that looks like internationally and where Canada's competitiveness is. So those were the, that's the first key priority area. And in terms of what we heard, um, we, we took all of that information and we narrowed it down into these six priorities. If they resonate with you, um, it would be great to know. If they don't resonate with you, that would also be great to know. If there are specific examples that you would like um, to provide us, that would be also great to know. So the second key priority is establishing biomass supply and stewardship. Um, our agriculture and forest lands are crucial um, to our culture and our economy here in Canada. And we need an evidence-based strategy that ensures the best use of our natural capital. Um, I'm sure all of you know, um, you know, just from, from traveling and crisscrossing this country, we are, we are still a resource-based economy. If you take a look at what our GDP is made up of, um, you know, there is that, that petroleum side on the oil and gas sector, but our forest and our agricultural economies are key and foundational um, to this country. So what we heard in terms of um, industry from a, a recommendation and a priority perspective is we need to invest more in science in terms of understanding the sustainability and the stewardship of our agriculture and our forest lands. Um, sustainability, sustainability came up paramount um, and it is also key in most of the reports that we reviewed. It is a massive factor when it comes to um, bio-based products um, and export and markets, access to markets of those bio-based products. Investing in innovation and implementation, um, significant. We do, we do um, a significant amount of that now. Um, Canada is a great, uh, a great place to do research and, and innovation, um, but we need to do more of it. Uh, and we need to do more of it to increase the productivity by transforming production and resource management practices. So those uh, that's another big focus, um, investment and innovation. We need to help um, companies increase their business expenditures on R&D. And we need to do that for agriculture and forestry and, frankly, um, our fisheries and aquaculture sectors as well. We need to optimize the efficient processing through R&D and upscaling um, at large scale demo flagship biorefineries. We, 
we do a little bit of this in Canada, um, but the upscaling and the demo flagship side of things, um, what has resonated loud and clear with us and came up at every one of the nine consultations that we have done to date. Transportation modes um, to serve the development of commodities and resources that underpin the bioeconomy value chain. Um, I, uh, I, I probably don't have to mention how the, the rail system is, uh, is, you know, used to underpin the economy of Canada in general. Um, and now um, what, you know, I, I guess maybe I'll throw out a quick example, the derailment that happened in field recently. To, I don't know if that resonates with anyone, but it was a derailment of grain cars. Um, I couldn't find that on the news, but I found all the derailments of um, petroleum-based products that instantly popped up. So I think we need to um, we need to refocus our transportation modes to serve the development of commodities and our resource sectors. Um, again, that came up loud and clear at uh, within our consultation sessions. Building strong companies and value chains. This is about, um, or at least this key area is really about understanding the conditions that create anchor firms. Anchor firms um, are, are essentially those high growth opportunities um, within Canada. And we need more of those anchor firms in general. And we definitely need more of those anchor firms in the bioeconomy to establish Canada as a bioeconomy leader. How are we gonna do this? Uh, industry has come back and said um, we need more government procurement programs focused on sustainability and bioproducts. We need to be able to encourage early adoption to create that initial market pull. Um, some of you may be um, familiar with the bio preferred program and the bio-based programs that are um, that exist in the EU all around um, government procurement. We need to integrate knowledge and mentorship into financing lead firms, and we need to help structure bankable deals. Um, financing came up uh, again at all nine of the industry consultations that we did, um, but the ability to help structure bankable deals was the hurdle. It wasn't about where, could, you know, where do we find the money? How do we get the money? It was how do we structure these deals and how do we support those potential anchor firms to structure those deals. We need to support producers and producer groups to leverage economies of scale um, with locally led biorefining projects. Um, that was another one that that we thought was kind of interesting um, from a, you know building strong companies. We need locally led biorefining projects. We need to look at this from a national scale, but we also need to bring it down to that local scale too. Where are these? Um, where are these products getting produced? How can we ensure that they get transformed as close to site as possible to make them economically viable? And how does that build into the larger value chain um, prospect? We need inventories and technology roadmaps. Um, that's That's been huge. There have been provinces out there who have done um, some work on the inventory side and the technology roadmap side, um, and even provinces that have put um, some funds together to ensure um, opportunities and matchmaking support uh, for bioeconomy firms. We need to do that at a, at a national level, and we need to connect them all across provinces. So this needs to be a top-down and a bottom-up approach. Uh, I can't stress how important the inventories and the technology roadmaps are and the ability to keep them ongoing and, and up-to-date. The, the last one here was the development of recognized criteria to assist um, financial and ratings organizations with the evaluation of credit worthiness of bio-based projects. Um, I would expect that this actually resonates quite well with a lot of the industry folks who are on the call today. Um, this is about how do we demonstrate the credit worthiness of large scale bio-based projects. It's, um, this is a, a significant hurdle um, for the, any of you who have gone to um, firms like BD, BDC or um, frankly, even um, something as, as lower scale or more, more risk tolerant as STDC and or a bank for financing or maybe one of your local RDAs. Um, this is a significant hurdle and we need to do a better job of assisting, 
um, those organizations in better evaluating and then understanding how to properly evaluate the creditworthiness of these projects. Sustainability um, and um, access to biomass all come into play there. So the third key priority area, I'm, I'm not seeing any questions pop up, so I'm, I'm, I'm kind of taking the lead to just burn through this. If you do have any questions, by all means, um, type them in and, uh, and we'll, we'll get around to answering them. So um, building strong, sustainable ecosystems. This one seems like, um, I don't want to say a no-brainer, but, uh, but it really is. We need to develop um, high-performing clusters across Canada. We've got a few that have um, been started. We've got the biochemical cluster in Sarnia. We've got um, a number of forestry clusters, um, basically from coast to coast between Quebec um, and BC. So we've started them, but we need some support in building them. We need to support the skills and the talent um, that these clusters need. Um, we need to support the higher education institutions in terms of playing lead roles in innovation and academic adaption um, for these sectors, primarily on the agriculture and forestry side. We need to promote partnerships with Indigenous peoples by in ensuring the engagement of their vision for Canada's bioeconomy future. These might even sound a little bit kind of pie in the sky, but they are instrumental in terms of building um, sustainable ecosystems. And they were common across the board again. So I think I missed one. Did I miss one? Nope, we got them all. Great. We put a couple of extra slides in here because these were comments um, that came up as part of the consultation process um, in terms of how do we ensure that um, we can link Canada's bioeconomy strategy to all of the climate change um, plans in that are happening in Canada, both provincially and nationally, and frankly, from an international perspective. We need to uh, link innovation, clean transportation, infrastructure, and sustainable living um, to climate change. That goes back to um, where Murray initially talked about um, the biodesign um, consortium. So that was an initial um, supercluster letter of intent that was put into play, and it was exactly focused on that. It was coast to coast, um, clean transportation and infrastructure, sustainable living, in order to ensure that Canada meets its climate change commitments. Um, that consortium is still loosely together and will be leveraged significantly um, as, um, as a, a consortium along with um, the academic uh, cluster that was put together around the Burnet uh, application as well. We need to demonstrate the role of our traditional industries um, in terms of the integral part that they play in Canada's climate plan. Um, we often think about um, our traditional industries as large emitters, but they can play a significant role um, in ensuring that we meet those climate change goals. We need to demonstrate how our natural capital plays a role in helping ensuring our country can achieve it, its climate change goals. Um, for those of you who are Lucky enough, like us, to get to travel internationally. Um, Canada is really, it gets put on the map. Um, you go to the BioWorld Markets um, events in Europe, and when all of these large multinationals are talking about um, where they're setting up their their clusters, where they're setting up um, their, um, their companies, um, it may be in where the most advantageous business um, tax regime happens to be, um, but they are all pointing to Canada for their resource um, allotments and allocations. And we need to take advantage of that natural capital that we have. We need to look at our, uh, our traditional industries um, as early adopters of clean technology. Um, that's, uh, if you take a look at Canada's clean growth hub, you know, $20 billion worth of clean tech funding uh, aligned under 18 different departments, I believe, in that clean growth hub. And we, as a bioeconomy, need to start looking at how our traditional industries can be the adopters of those clean technologies. Again, going back to 
um, what role can our natural capital play in helping us achieve those goals? Some of you might be uh, familiar with the term circular economy. We as a team have made a very um, just a, a very sort of you know line in the sand distinction between bioeconomy and circular economy. And for those of you who understand the definitions, you'll know why. Circular economy is based on the economic models that support environmental sustainability without forsaking economic opportunity. A bioeconomy underpins a circular economy. So although they're different, we believe the bioeconomy is the first step in supporting Canada's move to a more circular economy. So uh, we wanted to put this slide in here just to ensure that um, folks understood the distinction because circular economy will come up in the strategy a, a number of times, um, but it's, we're not calling this a circular economy strategy, we're calling it a bioeconomy strategy. All right, so for the dozens of you folks who are online now, um, we have an opportunity for you to participate uh, online. We developed a SurveyMonkey survey. Uh, the link is here. Um, it will get sent out to you after this. Um, and actually, I think we, if you look under, um, under the Handouts tab, there's a PDF under your Handouts tab that talks about this webinar. And as part of that, there's a link um, to the survey, Monkey Survey as well. And I will copy and paste this into the chat box so that you can take a quick look at it. Oh, so Jen's saying she can see some questions, but I'm not seeing them. So let, why don't I just get to the end of this um, and then I'll get Jen to read out the questions and, um, and we can take a stab at answering them. And I'm also going to copy and paste this link into the chat box and make sure that everyone sees it. Oh, Jen's already sent the link to the survey, so you'll see it in your chat box. Let us know if you have any issues with it. Um, we look forward to getting all of that information back. Please complete the survey before March 4th so that we can ensure that we, you know, we take everybody's comments um, into account before we actually finalize this report. And I've just got one more slide. So this is, um, we as a team, um, have really taken this strategy as an opportunity to demonstrate that Canada can be a world leader in terms of the bio, in, in terms of the global bioeconomy, um, and we want to make sure that um, this strategy is coming from industry. Uh, the 250 folks that have participated thus far, 80 plus percent of them have been from industry. I can tell by the close to 100 attendees here um, because I can actually see most of your names and, and I know most of you. Um, you are also coming from industry. So this will be um, industry focused uh, and it is focused on value chains um, and the global opportunity, um, which are paramount. All right, so I'm gonna ask Jen to read out some of the questions because unfortunately they're not appearing on my screen. Sure, no problem. Okay, so one of the questions that came in early on, um, hang on a second, uh, someone's asking, um, at the beginning we talked about the industry advisory group and they're wondering if that is envisioned as a permanent kind of committee or group. I, I'm going to say yes, um, and from a bioeconomy perspective, that's the other, I guess, sort of um, thing that, that we we need to figure out what makes the most sense. We don't have a national, we don't have a line department that is focused on the bioeconomy per se. We've got an ARCAN federally, most of the provinces have departments of natural resources. We've got agriculture and agri-food federally as a line department and we've got departments of agriculture provincially. Um, we need to ensure that we have industry around the table to um, 
to relay messages back into um, the line departments, as well as on the regulatory side. And that, that's where the big, um, I guess that's where the big conversation happened around the consultations that we did across the country was having industry around the table when regulators are dictating um, standards, what can happen, what can't happen, and how things need to be. Um, I hope that answered some of the questions. Um, great. Yeah. Another question um, is asking for our comments on kind of the difference between a national bioeconomy strategy and a national industrial bioeconomy strategy. Um, and um, if we could talk a bit about why this is an, more of an industry-led initiative. So this is um, this is a bioeconomy strategy, and at the same time, it is an industrial bioeconomy strategy. Um, we we have put definitions at the front of the strategy to date, in order to sort of, I guess, tie the two of them together. Um, together. So the second part of that question was, why is it industry focused? Or can you just repeat that, Jen? Um, yeah, I just, just wanted you to talk about how it's it's an industrial bioeconomy strategy. Um, so this, yeah, the all of the consultation sessions were focused um, around industry. We ensured that we were getting industry around the table. Um, we wanted this to be industry's voice and we wanted this to be industry who was essentially demonstrating um, what the hurdles were uh, to be able to provide this information back to um, back to the audience in terms of federal government, both agriculture and agri-food and NRCAN. Um, and it also needed to be cross-sectoral, which was um, another key for us. So we, we say forestry and ag, given that the forestry um, bioeconomy framework was put out in 2017 and on we didn't have anything specific on the ag side and we we also don't have anything specific from a, um, a fisheries and an aquaculture side as either but we need to start somewhere and if we can align at least the forestry and the ag side as a starting point we think that's a that's a good a good starting point marie was there anything that you wanted to add to that no i think you covered it pretty well megan um i think we need to make sure we with this properly and the definitions of how we how we roll it out as we are writing this uh, strategy. I think it is based on the, as a national bioeconomy strategy. It's sorry, Mary, we're not hearing you very well. All right, let me. <coughs> Um, I'll move along to the next question and maybe Murray might be able to fix his mic situation a bit. Uh, the question, um, where do we feel that, that building strong demand and pricing for bio-based products, where does that fit into our priorities? Is that something that we've included? So. It is. Um, and keep in mind that um, we have had to take the... I guess the comments and the feedback back from 250 folks and try and I don't want to say narrow it down because that doesn't do it justice, but to try and um, provide language that we can also um, put action items around. So in terms of strong building strong demand and pricing for bio-based products, um, I think you could think about that under the key priority area um, number one, where we talk about, uh, or sorry, number three, where we talk about government procurement programs um, and also supporting um, producers to leverage economies of scale. Um, so building strong companies and value chains. I, I guess I'll, I'll also say that um, what you're seeing is slides with key priority areas and um, recommendations within them. Each one of those recommendations um, is fleshed out with very specific action items. So some of the questions that we're hearing, um, you'll probably be able to um, see or resonate 
with the, the text in the actual strategy when you see it. So I, I hope that answers um, the question. Uh, the next question is, um, are you re reaching out to industry in emerging technologies such as 3D printing, artificial intelligence, and not just the, um, the technologies that are around the origin of the feedstock, like the biomass production? So how do emerging and new technologies fit into the strategy that are outside of the, the, the biomass and agriculture realm? So um, something that came up at uh, a number of the consultation sessions was um, matchmaking and figuring out how to increase the innovation within those traditional industries and get those emerging technologies adopted within um, our traditional industries and having our traditional industries lead as early adopters and innovators. So there were emerging technologies around the table. There were not a lot. Um, I, I can't give you an exact percentage, um, but some of them um, were there. And the other thing that, that I guess came out of that was um, the industry players who were there, whether it was, um, you know, producers on the agricultural side or on the forestry side, absolutely receptive. Um, and most of them said, we need better access to matchmaking in order to, to know who's out there from an emerging technology perspective. Um, and I will say that we heard both on the forestry side and on the ag side, um, we had producers say, we want to be early adopters. We even had groups say, um, we've got funds in play to adopt early technologies, but there are very few mechanisms out there um, for us to be able to meet them um, and then to evaluate them. So, so yes, um, there were a few of them around the table. Um, and yes, it was recognized by both the ag side and the forestry side that that was hugely important. Um, great. Another question goes back to the beginning of the presentation about the advisory um, body for, for regulations. And this person is asking, do we plan to integrate or add other players um, that are under what we listed as sustainable ecosystems? Um, so ecosystem players, would they also be part of these advisory, this advisory group? I, I suspect that most of those ecosystem players um, are organizations or associations much like ours, like BioMB or like BIC, um, who are made up of industry players. Um, so we differentiate them in terms of associations um, versus, you know, actual industry proponents. But um, from an advisory perspective, it, it, it was very clear that industry said we wanted to be the ones sitting around the table um, and we believe that there needs to be an industry-based advisory group. Um, so we're, we're, we're reiterating what we heard. Um, we did not hear them speak up and say we need academia at that table. We did not hear them speak up and say we need, um, we need associations at that table or we need not-for-profits. We need industry at that table. So that's what we heard again and again. Again, it's uh, Murray here. Can you hear me better with this than now or not? You're much clearer, Murray. Yeah. Okay. My apologies to people earlier if I I was I did a uh, headset on because we had a couple other people in the room here, um, and uh, giving you some feedback or some noise wise. But uh, uh, on the whole area, from an advisory perspective, we do have you know key groups that we're supporting the. The super cloud at this point as as the initial advisory group, but we have our 45 industry members come out of the biodiesel super cluster proposal as well. See this as an important piece for their future. Uh, so I expect in the you know as we develop over the next year, or so we will see you know a, a group of committees that we will develop develop line around the around this to make it come alive as a strategy. And uh, move it forward as as really Canadians' economy strategy. So I'll just leave it with that for now. So. Jen, were there any more questions that came in? We've um, we've we've got a couple minutes left um, before we wrap up, and I just wanted to um, again draw everyone's attention under the chat box. Uh, Jen was kind enough to provide the link to the Survey Monkey survey. Um, please, uh, it, it will take less than 10 minutes. I think, um, you know, we walked through it and I'm going to say three and a half, depending on how 
verbose you're going to be with your comments. Um, but that information will be great to have. We'll add it to the 250 or so comments that we've got to date. Um, and we can use it to beef up where pieces of this um, strategy really resonate. Um, there's one more question. Um, it's, it's addressing, um, I guess, producers and products that fall between uh, forestry and agriculture or various other sectors. So um, this uh, person says we are a company rooted in forestry, um, but we are harvesting birch sap with applications for nutraceuticals and health products. Um, they fall outside of agriculture and forestry, but um, have a lot of potential um, given the forest assets in Canada. Um, and they say there, they suspect there are many companies that fall between the cracks of these traditional sectors and industries. Um, how can we address this, these kinds of issues with, with our strategy? So going beyond the traditional siloed industries. Um, so another reason why, um, why I believe that this needs to be a national bioeconomy strategy. Um, you know, we can throw industrial in there, we can take industrial out. Um, this is cross sectoral. Uh, at the moment, as I mentioned previously, both federally and provincially, we have line departments that have very specific mandates around agriculture, around forestry, around fisheries and aquaculture. Um, we do not have that cross sectoral brush. Um, which is the bioeconomy, which is exactly where these firms fall. Um, and we talked about, um, you know, getting a, a better understanding around inventories and technology roadmaps and then doing that matchmaking support. And that was also under the key value area of strong companies and value chains. If we had a better understanding about, about the inventories, about the technology roadmaps, um, there would be a I believe a better opportunity to do the matchmaking cross sectoral um, and present projects for funding from a bioeconomy perspective and figure out and support um, the pathfinding that would be required to support a firm like this and find the early adopters and the partners around the table. I hope that wasn't too much of a rant. <laughs> I believe those are all the questions. Well, I think it's a, Go ahead, Mary. Little, I think there's some. I think there's some interesting questions too. I was just glancing through them, and I think we've answered a number of them. But we uh, let's make sure that we follow up with some of these as well, and make sure that uh, we know the uh, the uh, proponent for the question. Well, we can do a quick follow up with them and make sure that we've answered the questions. Uh, I think the things falling through the crack is something we really need to watch. And that's, you know, particularly some of these specialty products that people start developing uh, as we start understanding to make sure that they they have a place where they can where they, they can be caught and help help being developed to uh, build a national economy in this country. So um, we want to make sure that we miss some of those sort of things by by not having the right wording in the, in the strategy at the end of the day. So thank you for all your inputs. Thanks, uh, thanks everyone for your time. Um, as I mentioned before, um, this recording and the slide deck will end up on the YouTube channel. Jen will actually send it out to all of the attendees. Um, we will also send out the SurveyMonkey link again, but if you could take literally um, five minutes right now to to take care of that for us we would be most appreciative and our our next steps is to take your feedback um, put it together with what we have learned over the last number of months in those last nine sessions finish composing um, the strategy around those four key priority areas we we believe that the um, the recommendations some of them, you know, will will change slightly and more than likely we will probably add a few to them. We need to keep it digestible. Um, our next step in terms of submitting this is we need to um, have this finished before the end of the month um, and submitted back to Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada, who was the initial audience for this particular project. The following steps after that actually go back to the team. Um, and by team, I mean, um, you know, there's a 
whole slew of partners around the table um, in terms of crafting an action and implementation plan. And the funding has already been secured um, for that for the next two years. So once we've submitted this, um, we are moving ahead pretty quickly with uh, an implementation plan moving forward. So if you want to have your say, please, by all means, fill out the survey monkey, um, and we will keep everyone abreast um, as we move this forward. All right. I think we're good. I'm just going to take a quick look at the chat section and see if there's anyone else wanted to add anything. And if Jen says we've gone through most of the questions and Murray um, has reiterated that we will follow up individually with folks who have submitted questions just to make sure that we answered them appropriately for you. Uh, and this webinar is being recorded and it will be posted on our YouTube channel uh, later and you'll all have access to it again. And you can hear our lovely voices. <laughs> all right, um, thanks everyone for your time. Uh, we're at 51 minutes here, uh, 2.57 Atlantic time. Um, I guess good morning to the folks on the east, good afternoon, or sorry, good morning to the folks on the west, good afternoon to the folks on the east. Um, we look forward to wrapping this project up um, by the end of March and to ensuring that everyone gains access to it. Thanks so much and have a great day.